Insects are an important organism that's commonly found in the landscape and turf. They play a variety of roles, including decomposers, beneficial insects that are important in predation and parasitism, pollinators. They can also be an important food resource for other organisms that we find in the landscape. And then in some cases, they can even be considered a pest. In order to fully assess the role that these insects are playing in the landscape, we need to be able to accurately identify them. Today, let's talk a little bit about some of the common insect groups that are found in the landscape area. The first group we're going to talk about are the beetles, which belong to the order Coleoptera. Beetles are very diverse, but they all share some common characteristics. First is that they have two pairs of wings. The first pair being a hardened textured wing that we refer to as elytra. The second pair of wings are the hind wings, and these are membranous. All beetles have chewing mouth parts. Beetles play a diverse role in our landscape environment, including they can be predators. In some cases, um, they're very important in decomposing dead plant material, um, dead animals, and in some cases, they can even be pests. Two common examples of beetles that we would find in our landscape are lady beetles and ground beetles. These are both important predatory insects. Beetles also play other roles in our environment, including their role in decomposition, and in some cases, some of these groups are considered to be pests. For example, the white grub. This is an example of an immature beetle. The second group that we're going to discuss is the order Hymenoptera, which includes the bees, the wasps, and the ants. When we talk about this group, we can really divide it into these three subgroups. First, we'll discuss the bumblebees and the bees. The first thing that you notice about this group is their hairy bodies. Another characteristic of the bumblebees and bees is that they have a chewing lapping mouth part, which is really for dual purposes. The chewing component, which is comprised of the mandibles, allows these organisms to be able to cut flowers, um, use them for defense, or for molding wax. The lapping component allows them to be able to obtain liquid foods, such as nectar or pollen or a water source. The next group that falls within the order Hymenoptera are going to be the wasps. And the wasps also have the two pairs of membranous wings, however they have chewing mouth parts. And the other characteristic thing about the wasp is that they have this constriction between their body parts, between the thorax and the abdomen, which we refer to as a waist. The next group is the ants. Ants are going to be very different from the other two subgroups in the fact that most of the time when you observe an ant, you're not going to notice the two pairs of wings. The two pairs of wings are going to be restricted to the reproductive groups uh, during their mating periods. Ants, like the wasp, also have chewing mouth parts. Hymenopterans also play diverse roles in the landscape. For example, pollinators such as bees and wasps and bumblebees are very important. We also can think of examples of hymenopterans, which are important predators and parasitoids. And then there are examples of certain types of hymenopterans, which can cause problems in the landscape, such as fire ants or sawflies. The third order that we're going to mention are the dipterans, which include the flies, mosquitoes, and the gnats. Let's talk a little bit about the key characteristics for differentiating a fly, let's say, from the hymenopterans that we discussed. Many times they may look similar in appearance because we have examples of flies that mimic the appearance of certain types of wasps, such as surfid flies. But the distinction is, is that these groups are going to have a single pair of wings, and they have a modified pair of hind wings that we refer to as haltiers, which function to help them in balancing. The mouth part types of flies can be very diverse, ranging from sponging types that we see with house flies to a piercing sucking type that's common of our stable flies and mosquitoes. Dipterans are also another important group. Um, they're very important in the role of decomposition, dead plant material, dead ants. One in particular that we might highlight are blowflies. The last group are the hemipterans, and this is a very diverse group which includes such things as true bugs, stink bugs, uh, box elder bugs. We can also think about aphids, cicadas, leafhoppers. And the common characteristic of this group is that they all have a piercing, sucking mouth part type. Their importance is that some groups are predators, such as assassin bugs. Um, we also have examples of these groups which are very important pests of our plants. For example, um, aphids, leafhoppers. 
So as you might gather, insects are very diverse in their overall appearance and also in the roles that they play in our environment. So it's very important that we're able to accurately identify these insects so that we can assess their roles to know whether they might be causing damage to our plants or whether we need to try to conserve their populations because they're important predator, parasitoid, pollinator, or decomposer.